you know, for whatever, 300 bucks, you'd think <laughs> I know. the lid would the be a little bit better. A little scuffed. We're definitely not paying for bottle presentation. I mean, before you open it, it's beautiful. It's all, yeah. I mean, it's very uh, unassuming almost. It's like they use electrical tape and then pour wax over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. But yeah, this is a, a liter of Tears of Low, Low Rorona. Oh, jeez. I can never say it. Low Rorona. Low Rorona. what I've been pronouncing it as. Okay. Uh, my Spanish is not the best. But we're going to try and get through Ooh. some of this. Tequila. It does smell good. What makes tequila $300 a bottle? The master distiller, kind of. Okay. The age, the quality, and reputation. It's similar to whiskey, but there is some hype to go with the tequila, but not the same as the whiskey market. Okay. Where you'll get bottles that they've never been made before, and it's instantly $300. Um, I find with tequila, a lot of the bottles are from lifelong distillers and they're still a little unknown at least up here um but then you've also got people like the rock and george clooney and sammy hagar and commanding more money because of their name uh you can't in. read this unless you no. know spanish <laughs> okay so all right you've got a pretty hefty I do, stack yeah. of notes there i'm really excited about this i've been staring at this bottle for a long time uh, a very nice person bought me a bottle, Jennifer Neal. So we got to say thank you to Jennifer. Yep, shout out to Jennifer. Um, she uh, she was just impressed by my passion for tequila, so she wanted to give me a chance to try it. So that was really nice. So again, I'm going to say it wrong probably every time because I think I've been calling it L La Llorona. I've been calling it Leona. La, but that's Lorona. not even close. Maybe that is what it is. La Llorona. That's what I'll say. Llorona. If I'm wrong. I'm just, sure you guys will let yeah. me know in the comments. Just pound him in the comments if he's <laughs> wrong. Sorry, I had to get a sip. What, did you try it already? Oh, I've had it already. So, La Llorona means the one who cries in Spanish. Um, and essentially, uh, La Llorona is a st like a children's story that people, that a lot of mothers would tell uh, throughout Mexican, sorry, not Mexican, Central and South America. So it's kind of a far-ranging story. Uh, it's a story of faith and faithlessness, passionate love and shocking loss. Ah, it's, it's like a soap exciting. opera. Yeah. yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, the origin of the story is kind of a mystery. It's kind of like you know American folk tales. You don't necessarily know where they started. Um, and there's many versions that have been told, but the one that they kind of feature uh, in the story of this bottle is uh, a young woman scorned to madness by her unfaithful husband. And now she wanders, wanders Mexico's grand landscapes, crying bitter tears of regret. So it's, there's some artistic flair to the story they're throwing in there, which, I mean, you go look up any backstory, yeah. any booze that's got, or even if they're pretending to have history, uh, they start to... What are the soap the operas called flair? down there? Telenovelas? Say, telenovelas, that's exactly what that sounded like, a yeah. telenovela show. I tell you what, this is not the tequila you drank in college. No. This dude, I mean, I get, I get a lot out of this, other than like, the that, what I think of tequila, I think of like Jose Cuervo Gold, mm -hmm. but this, there's some fruit notes in there, and I can't quite pin them down. This doesn't taste like anything I've ever had. This is amazing. This well, doesn't taste like tequila <laughs> to me. I think it's phenomenal. It does taste like tequila to me. But I have a whole... But you, you drink a lot of te different kinds of tequila well, yeah, and well, some we'll better back, tequilas. I guess. So the first time I ever had a tequila I liked was on my wedding. Someone gifted us a bottle of Patron. So, of course, the wedding party passed it around just taking shots. I was very worried. I don't take shots. Hard liquor makes my stomach turn. Even whiskey, like I like to sip it, but yep. I've never been one to take shots. But that Patron went down so smooth after my wedding. I just started trying tequilas. And, and working here is a great chance to do it because you get to see all the bottles and I get to order bottles that I'm interested in trying. So I found some good ones that are a little cheaper. Uh, Corleo, Espelon, but mostly I'd stick to Blancos. We've had a few distributors bring in bottles for us to try 
and usually they're bringing in añejos and extra añejos that are all 100, 200 bucks, and they want to give yeah. us samples so that we bring it into the shop. And I was never super in love with the añejos to the point where I pretty much still just drink Blancos um, because they always taste like so much, to me it tastes artificial, vanilla, and all these flavors that people know are supposed to be in the bottle. Um, but it was like very heavy handed. And this to me tastes, I can in my head figure out how a tequila went from a Blanco to this. It still tastes like tequila and I can see what's changed in it, I think. It's a, it's, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, it still tastes like tequila, I even after all the age. That's a pretty good job of explaining it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Lola Rona's Passionate Tears inspired prominent tequilero, tequilero <laughs> German Gonzalez. And I can't say his last name. I'm just going to butcher it. So, uh, the master distiller was inspired by the story to come up with this tequila, which even now you look online, this is what a lot of serious tequila drinkers top bottles. Um, he was the son of Guillermo Gonzalez Diaz Lombardo, uh, who was the creator of Chincano, which was the first ultra premium tequila imported to the U.S. So that's one reason I think this is expensive, is it's the same family from the first big tequila that came to the U.S. I could get down with this. Yeah. Um, so the first time uh, Germain made this, it was just for him, and then it was too good to keep to himself. So then he had a small group of friends, um, you know, all their distillers come in and try it. And I think they, if I remember correctly, they kind of talked him into distributing it. And now it's still quite hard to find. I mean, we, it's not always easy for us to get a bottle to put back up on the shelf, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really nice bottle. <laughs> yeah, so definitely if you're getting into tequilas, or into tequilas, based on what you've said, in my opinion as well, this is a bottle that you keep on your shelf at home and probably bring out for special occasions, sharing purposes, uh, much like what we're doing today. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a margarita tequila. By any means, this no. is phenomenal. This is top shelf bourbon tequila, uh, and I think it's wonderful. It's I didn't incredible. think I was going to like it. <laughs> it's, it's just incredible. Um, one thing that I would love to do with it is to make an old fashioned or a Manhattan with it. Now I'm not going to, because I don't want to waste a drop of this, other than drinking it straight. No, but I've had some añejo old fashions and uh, Manhattans, and that just gives such a really nice twist to that cocktail. Um, but we'll see maybe i get to the end of the bottle we'll, we'll we'll kill it with a cocktail i do think that's a good idea that'd be something that we could do on another episode is just make a manhattan or something out of out of tequila oh i'd love that yeah. maybe for um a cinco de mayo episode um it's just got a a gorgeous color i'm not sure how it's going to show up on the camera but it is so dark from all the aging um i meant to look for something so and I didn't really pour us a lot because I didn't know how much we were going to be wanting to so drink. looking for the striations there. But, oh yeah, there's beautiful, beautiful legs on there. Um, but supposedly when you pour it in a glass, you'll get little bubbles around the outside. Uh, and that's a sign of quality for tequila, which I have to look into more. I've never heard of that. I mean, it's definitely not a thing in whiskey that I've ever heard of. So, um, something to look into. And it might just be when you first pour it. I love the nose on this too. You ever had flan? No. Oh man. What the hell is that? It's like a Central American dessert. It's like a pudding almost. I'm trying. It's been years since I've had it, but it smells like caramel flan, tons of caramel, dark chocolate, vanilla, and dried fruit. I mean, it doesn't even smell like booze. Yeah, this is a splurge buy for most people, but if you're if you're down to splurge a little bit on some uh, some high end spirits, yeah. man, this is good. Everything I smell in there, you get on the taste too, and there's a really nice spice and sweet. I just had a coffee before this, so when I first took my first sip, I was just like straight black pepper, which is wild, not in a bad way. Um, I've never gotten anything like that off of a booze, at least that strong. Some wines I've had, you get a little black pepper, cracked oh, yeah. pepper. Um, and then you just, I don't know, I was smelling through it the other night, smelling through it, going through it, letting mm -hmm. it rest, yeah. coming back, tasting it, smelling it. And you just keep getting more 
yeah, nutmeg, ginger, creme brulee, cinnamon. I mean, you can just dig up anything out of this. I don't know. I, I'm i in love with this bottle. I can tell. I, I, I don't I can know tell. if it'll ever get finished because I don't know. Even when I get down to, you know, like a shot, I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. Well, it was a hell of a nice uh, gift to you, and uh, I certainly appreciate uh, the, the dram. So, tears of... However you want to pronounce it. Leon. <laughs> La Llorona. Cheers. Cheers.